Hey drummers, it's Rob here from drumsandword.com on the cold and rainy November day in England. But hopefully we're going to warm up a little bit and have a bit of fun with this one. I want to teach you how to play the song Take Me Out by Franz Ferdinand, drummed by Paul Thompson. The tempo starts at 143 BPM and then later in the song, it actually slows down to a different tempo, but we'll go over that a bit later on. So the tempo starts off as one and two and three and four. That's the tempo of the quarter note. That's what we'll be counting. One, two, three, four. One and two and three and four. And one, two, three, four. And Paul comes in with the drums very simply on the hi-hat. He's playing this molar whip technique, which you might have heard other drummers talk about in the past, where you're playing this motion. It's a whipping motion. It allows you to play this pattern more comfortably and easily because what we're doing, what Paul is doing, is he's playing the beats one, two, three, and four on the hi-hat louder than the ands. We're actually hearing this, one, two, three, four, but then he's moving this motion to put in the ands in between. If you can't play that motion, then you could just play all the eighth notes at the same tempo, at the same volume, sorry. It doesn't sound particularly great though. So what I recommend you do if, if, if you're struggling with that is obviously have a go at practicing it because this whipping molar technique, which you can find loads of free videos online, including my website, it's really useful to be able to learn that technique. But in the meantime, just to play the song, you can just play quarter notes through the intro. It doesn't sound exactly the same, but it's keeping time and it's keeping tempo. So we've got this pattern, this one bar at the first, first bar of the chart, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and, and it just repeats for another four bars. But at the end of the first line, we've got this one little bass drum to look out for on the and of beat four, the very last bar of the first line. So make sure you've got the chart out in front of you for this so we can be following along with what I'm saying. On the and of beat four, the very last bar, and then going into beat one on the next bar, on the next line, so we actually get two bass notes next to each other. So that very last bar, one and two and three and four and one. So we get this and one at the end of the bar. One and two and three and four and 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 one. And we're slowing down to the tempo of the second section there. So there we go on to the second line and it's exactly the same. So we got um, another bass drum note at the end of the, the second line on the last bar on the and of beat, band of beat four, going into beat one on the next line. So we get one and two and three and four and one, but this time the bass drum continues on the quarter notes on beats one, two, three, and four. So we actually get from that last bar of the second line, one and two and three and four and one, two, three, and at that point the bass drum comes in and pretty much for the rest of the entire song, that bass drum doesn't stop. It's known as playing four on the floor because you're playing four notes every bar on the floor, i.e. the bass drum. It's a really good um, uh, dance sort of beat to be able to play, especially when we put the snare drum in later on, and that open hi-hat thing as well, which we get onto in a bit. So the third line, just four bars of this, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Again, you can play quarter notes, one, two, three, four, just to keep time. Then onto the second, uh, sorry, fourth line, Exactly the same, continuing for the full four bars, but look out for the end of the fourth bar where we've got some hi-hat flourishy stuff coming in. So that very last bar of line four, we get this double-handed hi-hat thing. We're playing one and two and three, and at that point, we then bring the left hand up to play and a four E and a. So we're doubling up the notes on the hi-hat for the last half of that bar, but the, um, the doubling up the 16th notes occur on the and a beat three. So just the hi-hat pattern, one and two and three, and a four E and a one and two and three, and a four E and a. With the bass underneath, one and two and three, and a four E and a one and two and three, and a four E and a. So you've got to be comfortable coming up to the hi hat for the and a beat three, playing and a into the bass drum, and continue the 16th notes to the end of the bar. <coughs> Excuse me. By the way, 16th notes, you can fit four of them in every beat. So when we're playing 16 notes, we're playing four notes. Uh, or feeling four notes to every bass drum note, and when we're playing eighth notes, we're feeling two notes to every bass drum for this song in particular. So on we go to the second line. By the way, that next line, I keep saying second line. By the way, those extra hi hat flourishes aren't essential to be able to play along with this song. They're just a little neat bit which you can add in if you want to play it note for note. So on to the very last line of that section before we go into the 16th note bit, just beneath it. We got a crash cymbal on B1. So after we come out of that hi-hat flourish, and a 40 e and a, we go into a crash cymbal on B1. Then we go back to our normal eighth notes on the hi-hat. One and two and three and four and. 
onto the second bar of that line, we've got another little hi-hat flourish. We get one and two and three. And just like the bar line above it, so we get and a four, but it breaks. So we get and a four and a one. Right, left, right, right, left, right. One and two and three and a four and a one and two and three and a four and a one and two and three and a four and a one and two and three and a four and a one. Again, you can leave that stuff out, but that's what Paul plays on the recording. Into a crash cymbal, as I just showed you. And a four and a four and a one. Into a crash cymbal for the third bar. And then for the fourth bar, last bar of that line. One and two and three and a forty and a. So just like the bar above it, on the line above it, we're playing and a forty and a on the hi hat. This time we move it to the snare drum, exactly the same pattern, starting on the and a beat three. And you must try and include that bass drum on beat four to keep the pulse of the song going. So we get that last bar. One and two and three and a forty and a one and two and three and a forty and a one and two and three. It's a quite a cool idea there. Let me play for you. That, that whole line, because there's a few different things going on there, but a medium tempo. So for the beginning of that line, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and a four and a one and two and three and four and one and two and three and a four and a one. Then we're into the next section. I've written note hi hats are now played half open. So there's a there's a, a, a bit on the line above it. Before, just before we go into the 16th notes on the hi hat, where the hi hat's getting a little bit, lo um, little bit loose and sloshy, but it's really only really noticeable on this line where the hi hat is played half open with a wash effect. So we'll play just 16th notes now on the hi hat. Right, left, 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 right, left. Four notes to for each bass drum. One E and a two E and a B. And the hi hat is played half open, not fully open, but so the two cymbals are touching each other, so they rattle around a bit. Um, like this. One and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a. By the way, I should point out at this point in the video to suddenly thought about how weird this is probably looking to some people. I have my hi hats up on this side of the kit. I'm left footed but right handed. Don't ask. It was a mistake that I made when I first started learning the drums many years ago, and I've sort of just stuck with it, and it's worked for me, luckily. But um, this is not how most drummers play. Your hi-hat would be over here, most likely, if you're right-handed. So you'll be playing right, left, right, left, right, left. I play it over here. So don't get thrown off by that. That's just my hi-hat's here and not here. And that's it. That's the only difference. So we get a crash cymbal on beat one of every one of those bars. One E and the two E and the three E and the four E and the one E and the two E and the three E and the four E and the one. For four bars. The next line, another crash cymbal on beat one. The, the hi-hat pattern continues. This is the cool bit, however, I've written for the second bar onwards, note, band starts to slow down in tempo. So this is where you've got to know the song pretty well, and you've got to feel where the tempo's going to. The da, 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 that tempo will change into 105 BPM. You don't have to know this exactly, you can sort of just hear the song in your head. Da, da, so we're going from da, 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 to da, 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 da. But we're slowing over, slowing down over those three bars. So what Paul and the rest of the band do, which is quite cool, and stay beautifully in time, is go from that second bar to start to slow down, third, fourth bar. So that was actually all three bars played there. Let me play for you the, um, the, the that whole line. So we've got the one bar of normal tempo, 143 BPM, and then we start to slow down. So we get one and the two and the three and the four and the Then we start to slow down, very gradual. Last bar, one, two, three, four, one. And then we're at our correct tempo. So again, knowing the song is gonna allow you to think, okay, well, I'm hearing that, that, and we're slowing down, we're getting to that tempo, waiting for that stampy part, stampy part coming up. Let's just go on to that bit now. By the way, I'll be playing this um, whole page for you in a second. So we've got tempo, 105 BPM, new section of the song. In fact, that first half of the song is like a different song complete, which is really cool. So we get, um, Bass drum and hi-hat being played on each beat of the bar, and the hi-hat is opening, we create like what's called a little hi-hat bark. It's opening when you hit, when you strike it with the stick, and it's closing a 16th note later, so almost like if you feel like it's closing straight afterwards on the E of each beat. So we're getting... It's open, close, open, close. Down with the bass drum, close with the hi-hat foot. So at tempo, it's going to be da 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 da. So it's 
dead it, dead it. Open close, open close, open close. If my, my hi hat foot, let's just change the other camera, see if you can see this a bit easier. Um, it's a bit dark in my room, sorry about this. My hi hat foot is this one. So my hi hat foot's going open close, open close, open close, open close, open close, open close, like that. This is going back to where we were. So on it goes um, to the new part of the song, and we, we play that bar four times, but then at the very end of the page, the last bar of the page, the last bar of that line, we get the first half of the bar, one, two, but then from beat three, for the last two beats of the bar, the hi-hat remains open when we strike it. Bass drum comes down with beat three, three, and with the left hand on the snare drum, four, and then and uh, crash. Let's turn the page over so we get ready for the next section of the song. So then we're going to verse one. So that last bar of the first page, one, two, three, and four, and then one. Right, left, right, right, left, three, and four, and then one. So we get one, two, three, and four. into verse one. So at this point, let me just play for you the whole page. So uh, forgive me if it's a little bit dull for the first half of the song, um, me playing along to this without the music. By the way, that's for copyright reasons. I can't give you this lesson or sell you this lesson and include the actual music for copyright reasons. So when you're um, listening to this, this uh, forgive me for the first three or four lines, it's gonna sound pretty similar, but I wanted to play for you the whole page, the whole front page, first page going from once, one half of the song to the second half. So, here we go, here's the first um, page of the chart played up to speed. So as you heard there, we're into page two and we um, played into a little bit of the verse, the verse groove, which is this kind of disco-y dance beat. Absolute classic amongst drummers. Every drummer should be able to play this beat. Uh, perhaps I'll go over a few variations as well in a moment. The basic idea, we're playing four on the floor, four, uh, four bass drums, one, two, three, four, snare drum one beats two and four, one, two, three. So this is the first time the snare drum back beat comes in in the song. And we're playing the hi-hat with our right hand or left hand, if you're left-handed obviously on the end of each beat in between each bass drum. Make sure those bass drum snare drum notes come down together nice and tight. So feel the bass drum as one, two, three, and four, and feel this is like an upbeat on the and. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. The next step to make it sound like the beat is to open the hi-hats when you strike it on the and and close it when you come down with the bass drum foot in each, uh, each part, each beat of the bar. So we get one and two and three and four. Open, close, open, close, open, close. Notice I'm only striking the hi-hat on the and. I'm not playing one and two and three and four, although you could. So what I'm doing there is I'm playing all the eighth notes on the hi-hats. Um, but as you can hear, you don't need to do it because you can't really hear the difference. So a lot of drummers like to play just for a bit of showmanship, plus it feels kind of cool, just to play on the ands instead of playing all the eighth notes. But if you find this too difficult, you could just play one and two and three. Nothing wrong with that at all. If that's easier for you, then you can go for that. But have a go at trying to play this because it's really cool. 
And that's our disco B drum beat for the song, really. We've got a crash cymbal on beat one. So when we go into that, um, play that crash, the next note's gonna be on the and, on the hi-hat. One, and, two, and, three, and, four, and. And on it goes for four more bars for the verse one. And then at the end of the bar, pretty much at the end of each of the verses, of each of the lines of the verses, we get this little short drum fill. So the very last bar of verse one, sorry, the very last bar of line one of verse one, one and two and three and four and a one. So we come down to the snare jump to play and a right left into a crash on beat one of the next bar. So instead of playing the and on the uh, and the four on the hi-hat, we're playing on the snare drum and put that little extra snare drum note on the earth there before going into a crash. Now, uh, uh, interesting little thought here. So um, for the beginner drummers out there, if they want to have a go at this, they're probably just going to want to keep the hi-hat opening and closing on the ands throughout the entire bar. So I did that, I came out to the snare drum, but I still opened the hi-hat on the ands, so my feet aren't being interrupted, so I don't have to concentrate on what are my feet doing. For the more intermediate drummers, however, I think it sounds better if you don't open the hi-hat on the and of four, and you play this, one, and two, and three, and four, and up. So there I didn't open the hi-hat when I played the and on the snare drum, it doesn't matter, but it's just, you shouldn't feel you have to do that. It's, it's one of those things that um, if, if you could have a go at trying to learn this motion and uh, in a song like this, um, if you're not hearing it, you don't really have to play it. So basically have a go at both, but see which one you feel more comfortable with. If you f find it difficult, then keep the hi-hat opening and closing throughout the entire bar, throughout the entire verses, and uh, that make it easier for you. But um, you don't have to, and perhaps you shouldn't, if, if you can have a go at that. So on to the next line, verse one, and we got four bars of the same, so we'll skip over there, the drum fill at the end of the line again. Then I've written for the third line, note to vocals enter, so we know where we are in the song. And it just continues, the third line is just more of the same, the line above. But then notice on the fourth bar, fourth line, sorry, um, we don't have a crash cymbal on beat one of bar one. So we go from that drum fill, and uh, straight into a bass drum note on its own. And a one, and two, and three, and four, and a one, and a one. So there's no crash cymbal on beat one. If you forget that or accidentally put a crash cymbal in there, it doesn't really matter. But Paul actually thought about this because he does it in the second or third verse, wherever it is, we'll come up to later on, where he does the same. He doesn't play a crash after that drum fill, just for the one line, the third line of the verse, where the vocals, after the vocals come in. So uh, I'll play that for you in a moment. In fact, let me play that for you now. Um, so uh, again, it's gonna sound pretty similar, but. Um, but I wanted to um, make it complete for you this video. So here are the first four lines, and listen out for that no crash symbol on the fourth line of beat one, because um, that's really the only difference between those four lines. Here's what all that sounds like played up to speed. So we're going to go down now to verse two. Um, uh, so the last three lines of page two, and we've got um, the groove continuing, four bars of the same with the drum fill at the end of the first and second line. But then notice the very last line of page two, the very last line of verse two. We've only got two bars there, so we've got a shorter line going into our first chorus. So the first bar of the last of the last line is your standard groove. Then the second bar has that drum fill starting on the and of beat three. And the and we had previously, but we're leading into it with the with the drum groove. One, and two, and three, and a, and a. And again, if you can try and keep the hi-hat under control for that section, then that, that might sound better rather than having the hi-hat come down on beat four with the bass drum, but things like that don't really matter. One, and two, and three, and a, and a, one, and two, and three, and a, So, let me go on to the next page, page three, and we've got our first chorus. So this is now double-handed hi-hat um, territory. We're playing up on the hi-hat, both hands, 
and we're still keeping the bass drum going all the way through. So this is just, forget about the bass drum foot, that's just going constantly. One E under, two E under, three E under, four E under. We come down to the snare drum with the right hand on beats two and four. One E under, two E under, three E under, four E under, one E under, two E under, three E under, four E under, one. And then for the first bar, because each bar is slightly different, we've got a crash and balloon beat one. One E under, two E under, three E under, four E and. And the hi-hat opens there on the and of beat four, which comes down actually with the right hand. The right hand is playing the ands of each. One and two and three. And so your right hand comes down on the and of beat four, and the hi-hat opens for the rest of that beat, from the and of beat four to beat one. Now on the recording, it sounds like he's just sort of constantly playing the hands, but very subtly keep that left hand, the very last note of the bar, quieter, so you don't really hear the hi-hat being played while the cymbal's open. Let me show you what I mean. So if you were to play just constant hi-hat notes, it would sound like this. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. So we get and a one, and a one. And you can do that as well. I like to play it where I just leave out that left hand at the end. So we just play that one right hand note. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and. And then we come back down with the right hand for beat one of the next bar. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E down. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E down. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and one. But you can play one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E. Duh! <laughs> I felt I was breathing. I'm trying to swallow a spit and they made a mistake. So we try that again. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and one E and a three E for both hands. I did it again. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. Two. Three, four, and a one, two. So it doesn't really matter. Um, that version where you're playing all the, all the hi-hat notes with the right, left, um, all the 16th notes with the, with the hands actually sounds quite nice if you can play it subtly. If you play it loudly, you get two distinct open hi-hat sounds and it doesn't sound like the recording. So if you can't play that subtly, then just leave out and just play that, um, that open hi-hat on the and of beat four with just the right hand and then come back in with the right hand on beat one. Okay, so the second bar. We've got one E and a two E and a three. This is kind of cool. We've got this, this turnaround of the beat, which is sort of what I was doing accidentally a second ago. I'm sort of hearing it in my head. Three E and a four E and a. That's all it is. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left. Three E and a four E and a. We were playing three E and a four E and a. If you're at a normal place. Bass drum still coming down on, on beats three and four. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one. So relatively simple that, but very, very effective. You get this, the snare drum suddenly pops out on the and of beat three and the and of beat four. Then onto the third bar, and it's the same as the first bar of the line, so crash on one, that open hi-hat on the and of beat four. And then the fourth bar uh, of the groove, because it's a four bar pattern for the choruses, uh, we've got the same idea as bar two, except we've only got one snare drum note being played on the and of beat three. One E and a two E and a three E and. So we just, the right hand comes down only to the snare drum for the and of beat three, back up to the hi-hat for, for the rest of the bar, and then the and -a at the end of the bar for on the snare drum right left. One E and a two E and a three E and four, and a one E and a two E and a three and four, and a one E and a two E and a three and four. Okay, let me play for you the first line of chorus one, that's sort of medium tempo of me counting out loud. Here's what that sounds like. One E and a two E and a three E and a four E and one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and one E and a two E and a three and four and a one. I'll play this up to, up to speed for you in a moment. But that's basically it, that's, that's, that's the four bars. So probably the hardest part of the song playing that, that double handed groove. Onto the second line of chorus one, and it's exactly the same as the first line, apart from the very last bar where we get this drum fill leading us out into verse three. So the last bar of chorus one, the second line, we get one E and a two E and a three E and a four E. And there's a little open hi hat note there he plays on beat three. It closes on the E of beat three. So the same as we had before at the beginning of the song. That, 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 that sort of speed open closing, opening on one beat and closing a 16th note later. So that the hi-hat foot closes on the E of beat three, then we play and a four E and a. Stuff like that can be pretty confusing with your feet doing all this kind of stuff for beginners. So just leave out that open hi-hat and just play one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a if that's easier for you. But Paul plays one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a. 
nice little hi-hat part there just before the drum fill before going into verse three. So as promised, now let me play for you both lines of chorus one played up to speed. Here we go. So on to verse 3, and it's exactly the same as verse 2 and verse 1, I believe, um, where we just have um, the uh, four bars being played with a drum fill at the end of each bar. Look out for the no crash symbol on beat 1 of line 3, as we talked about previously in the previous verse. He leaves out the crash symbol on beat 1 of that bar, which is a cool little thing to look out for. And then the last line of verse 3, we've got the same thing again, but look out for the very last bar, where we get a little break with the rest of the band, and um, Paul plays a little hi-hat stab on beat one of that fourth bar, 1E, 1E, as we had at the beginning of the song. But notice how it goes into it from the bar previously. I'll show you what I mean now. One, and two, and three, and four, and 1E. So it's already open when we strike it again on beat one, and 1E. One, and two, and three, and four, and 1E. confusing myself thinking it's more complicated than it is. It's easy if you just play along to the music and you sort of don't have to think about it so much once you've practiced it many, many times, obviously. One and two and three and four and one E. So it closes like that. It's already open on the and of four and then you strike it again on one and it's already open and it closes there nicely on the E of beat one straight afterwards. So that's how you go into that section. The rest of that bar is rested and Paul comes in and right at the end of the, of the bar with the, with the snare drum drum fill and the one as we go into verse 4. So that last bar, 1 E and 2 and 3 and 4 and then 1. Let me play for you the last line of verse 3, um, counting out loud. 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3. First bar, 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 E and 2 and 3 and 4 and then 1 and 2 and. So you can be counting along. 1. And that snare drum roll there happens on the and of beat four, on the upbeat of beat four. Into verse four then, and we've got um, our same groove. Look out though for a cool little um, a, a variation that occurs in the groove on bar two. This is a nice little idea, this. We're playing one and two and three and four and bar one. So that snare drum there falls in between the right hand on the hi-hat just before going to a crashable on beat one. So we're playing and a one. And the hi-hat's open though. And a one. So when we strike that snare drum, the hi-hat is open, ringing out. One, and two, and three, and four, and a one, and two, and three, and four, and a one. Lovely little idea, little variation there to look out for. And then onto the um, last bar of that line, verse four, we get to one, and two, and three, but on beat three we come down to the snare drum and we play three and a four. So in previous parts of the songs, in fact I think pretty much all the rest previous parts of the songs, we're starting the snare drum roll on the and of beat three. This is the only time it occurs starting on the downbeat on beat three, not on the and of three, but on three. So we get to one and two and three and a four. And a. So be aware of that, that that's a slightly earlier start to the drum fill. Right, left, right, left, right, left, right. The simple 16th notes to the end of the bar. Then, as like we had in previous verses, the last um, line of the verse before the chorus is two bars long. So the last line of page three, we've got the same as the last line of, of verse two, I think it was, where the second bar, the very last bar of the page, one and two and three. And At that time, it starts on the and of beat three, not on beat three. If you want to play it note for note, just like Paul does on the recording book. Whether you start on beat three or the end of three actually doesn't really matter, I don't think. So before I go on to the last page, let me play for you um, the last line of verse three and then the two lines of verse four going into a bit of chorus two. So you can hear how, how those sections go from one section to the other, played up to speed.
Alrighty then, so the last page of the chart, page four, and we've got chorus two, and we've got um, exactly the same as chorus one. Yes, exactly the same. Every single drum fill, every single part, exactly the same. So nothing new to talk about there. But then we go into the very last part of the song. So after we've gone from the, the second to last line, we get one E and a two E and a three E and a four E and a... And we come up to the hi-hat and we get ready for those stabs. One, two, three. So it goes from the double-handed part into the simple just quarter notes. For four bars. The fourth bar, however, the hi-hat just rings out at the ends and, and just, just to ring out, basically. So we just the last, very last bar, we just play one and let the hi-hat ring out for the end of the song. Simple as that. So let me play for you those last two lines of the chart and uh, yeah, then we'll wrap up. So there you go, that's the whole song for you. I uh, hope you enjoyed yourself with this video lesson. I hope you have fun playing along to it. Um, it's a great song, it's got some really cool sections, nothing too complicated going on, apart from the double-handed hi-hat part, perhaps, because it's quite a fast tempo, or medium tempo. Um, but I hope you have a lot of fun having a go at those sections. If you've got any questions, then feel free to email me, robertdrumsaword.com, or contact me through my Facebook page, Twitter account, or Google Plus account, although the Facebook page is probably the best place to contact me, because I'm always on Facebook, like most people. Um, thank you very much for um, purchasing this lesson individually, or if you're an online member, then welcome. I uh, hope you're enjoying yourself. Don't forget, if you're not an online member, you can get access to hundreds of full song video drum lessons, just like this one, by signing up to become an online member at drumsaword.com. You get a year's access to all of the lessons I ever recorded, all the drum charts, free PDF drum books, three of them in fact. So loads and loads of free cool stuff. Um, and uh, uh, well, there you go, that's what you get. And I hope, uh, hope you'll check out drumsaword.com and see if that's something you might be interested in. Until next time, happy drumming to you and toodle pip.